How's everyone doing today? Or if you're watching uh, um, late at night, how you doing tonight? How's your night going? Hope you're doing well. This is Sly Gittins here. Um, come on view with another security tip. And today we're going to be uncovering and talking a little bit about the power of RSA Secure ID Access Identity Assurance. Uh, I think that's the next ex evolution of you know multi-factor authentication, where you're doing a little bit more risk-based analysis on this. So I want to dive into it because I feel like people don't talk too much about it. They kind of focus on um, the, the introduction stuff, but it's good to understand that, right? So first thing I'm going to talk about is passcodes are not enough, and I think we all know that already. Right? I think we can agree on that. Um, tra traditional authentication is not enough. So two-factor is just not enough. Um, we need to have that bare bones in our environment, but there needs to be um, something else added in that environment. Why do I say that? If you take a look at some of the security news out there, you see you know, a lot of places implementing two-factor authentication as no longer as an option. It's not an option, it's a requirement now because of the breaches as it happening. Um, and you see it happen at all different, you know, vertical markets. So in finance, you see it in higher education, healthcare, um, oil and gas. Um, and this is nothing new. They've been doing two-factor for years now, right, you know? So this isn't like a, a big thing, but I think it's finally becoming mainstream um, and being more widely adopted and more, more um, attention on it because it's been happening all day. Um, a lot of security breaches have been happening and been pretty rampant on um, all your news station out there. But we don't talk about um, the biometrics. We don't talk about the risk-based um, authentication. I think that's an area of um, that's worth some exploration, right? So one thing I want to talk about is, you know, I talked about before, most traditional authentication solutions require a trade-off between secure access, right, and convenience. So usable access tools which are often deployed as a one size fit all. And um I see that often when I go into accounts. They usually have a solution that they try to push out for all their users and not taking in account and how that user is using that actual application, right? Um they're not defining the policies well. They're not they don't have a solution that allows for flexibility. Um and, and what I find is a lot of the users just don't adopt that technology. They won't use it. They try to find ways to circumvent it if it's not, um, if it's not you know, user friendly. Um, so one thing I think where to organizations of today need to shift their thinking is from traditional authentication being kind of a static one-time event. You know, you put in your code and you get access, um, and it needs to be based on a little bit more context. Right, so we need to get that user need to have something that's you know making sure we they need to have some more information that allows us to really understand who they are, right, so we can know exactly the risk when we're granted them access into that particular application or if you leverage a VPN into our networks um so by applying those risk based approaches um such as identity assurance. Now you can go beyond that simple yes or no um, or step up authentication, right? And now you can really add the intelligence that provides a broader context about the user situation and why are they, um, you know, what prompts them to you know, request this um, access, right? So one thing I like to talk about, um, I've been doing a lot of work with the RSA Secure ID Access Platform as of late. And um, they got six key elements that I wanted to talk about. Um, and these are when you're creating an effective identity assurance strategy, right? Business context, right? As a sales engineer, system engineer, when I'm going in front of my customers, not only do I need to understand the actual product that I'm leveraging, but I really need to focus on what problems am I solving? Why am I in there, right? Um, also, anomaly detections. How do you make sure that um, you're just not giving false positives and, you know, you're ruining that customer experience? Um, you need a solution that has a little bit of machine learning, behavioral analytics, that can um, do some self-learning you know, on its own. Um, and you need to be able to connect into a lot of different applications out there. 
And then it got to be consistent. Uh, one thing I've been seeing is a lot of people have point solutions where they might use um, Office 365 two-factored and Amazon two-factored, and they have two-factor for their other cloud applications, and they got two-factor for their on-premise. The only person that helps, you know, is that maybe not even an admin. It doesn't help anybody. The admin has to go into different accounts. Remember how you set it up. The user got to go get used to multiple different um, environments. You want to keep a consistent experience across um, all applications, right? So um, whether that's for the admin or whether that's for the end user, I think it's pretty imperative to have that uh, a consistent look and feel. And also flexible authentication, right? How do you want that user to log in? You maybe just want a, a, a simple yes or no password. Maybe you want an uh, eye scan in there, maybe a fingerprint, biometrics. Maybe you want a trust-based location or you have uh, um, a call center where you know none of your people should be outside of the radius of your building. So we can set up like trust networks in there where it doesn't even need to have that. Just, you know, as long as you log into your browser, it, it requests that information and it gets you inside of there. Or, you know, maybe we want to do something like identity confidence, right, where we actually get in, where we um, – you know, we're learning more information about the actual user in your environment, right? So my main thing is identity assurance helps quantify how confident am I a user, how, like, how confident am I that the user who I'm authenticating is actually that person? How sure do I need to be to be based on that information to access it, right? This is what... Identity assurance helps us understand that person who is in that environment is that person, right? And if we're not sure if that's the person or not, let's step them up with different policies we can get into. So um, I want to get into something um, called con control access, right, um, or just policies. One thing I really like about the RSA Secure ID Access platform is um, they had over 500 applications out of the box integrations, right? Um, uh, over the weekend, I ended up doing a Fortinet integration that I was able to showcase. Um, I was able to showcase um, at the Ingram One um, event in Dallas the other day. It took me all but 20 minutes to do the integration. It was quick, easy. Um, they showed me exactly how to do it from a um, RSA standpoint, and also how to integrate it into the Fortinet. Um, then I was also able to do a Cisco ASA in about 30 minutes, if that much, um, to get that knocked out. Um, I did Amazon. I did Dropbox. I did uh, Salesforce. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be adding um, Microsoft 365 in our environment and Microsoft Azure in our environment. And once I get those out, um, I'm going to show you that. And also, um, we got um, voice and SMS authentication, and I'm working to build out of my data center that brings to you lately as well. So the main thing I want to focus on here, not only do RSA have out of the box integrations, they also make sure that they're continuously enforcing the appropriate access to the available user that's there, right, on any device, on any application. So what is it trying to do is it's trying to leverage three business context fundamentals: data the person, and the environment. So when I try to build the policies, I'm trying to make sure when I'm enabling this authentication, who am I building this for? What data I'm trying to protect? And what type of environment am I doing, right? What type of, is this work person on the road? Um, you know, that might, you know, you might want to add different, um, you know, different security policies on that, right? So this allows us to, you know, pair the multi-factor authentication with identity assurance. So you got to figure out, does the solution that you have able to do that underneath one hood? And that's one thing I found out, which I liked about uh, our secure ID access, right? Um, so let's get into it. I think I did enough talking. It's already 10 minutes in. Let's get, let's get into the actual live demo because um, I'm a person who likes to show what they've actually been doing. Uh, make sure that um, you um, leave some comments on there as well. Um, I'd like to hear from you, what you want to see, what you like, um, and let's, let's keep doing it. So you might say in the beginning, Sylvester, I saw you log, log on with a username and password. You just said username and passwords 
weren't secure. So why do you have it? So on my environment, the reason why I have it is, is this is my demo environment. So what I could have done each and every time from my administrator, this is the admin console, um, if I actually went into portal settings, I can have password plus multi-factor authentication policy. So I can make it so that, um, which I recommend when I talk to my customers, when their admins are logging in, make sure you activate this right here. And this allows me to add um, assurance level, so be a medium. We want to get into uh, what that actually means, right? So I'm not going to keep that because I don't really want to do it, and I have other people going into my um, environment. I uh, don't want to lock them out. But anyway... We're gonna get into that. And I actually do a demo. I do a demo on actually activating that and showing you how that looks like. So first thing we want to talk about when we talk about identity assurance is you need to take a look at the assurance levels. Can your solution do this, right? Can you separate it from high, medium, and low? The good thing with the low assurance, you also can get um, leverage the medium and the high um, different uh, authenticators. And when you get to medium, you can use the high authenticators. And when you're at high, you're only using the high because that makes sense, right? Um, this is for a critical asset. So in this way, I got for lower um, assurance level, I got iPrint. Um, I could change that to something else. In most environments, I usually see approve as iPrint. I just wanted to flip it around and um, you know, I'll just try to try different things out to see how it works. So we could do an authenticate code, FIDO token. So you don't want to use an RSA token, use a FIDO token. Um, a secure ID token, uh, a secure ID token and approve. Um, you know, a secure ID token and an iPrint. Um, and also, um, once I activate the SMS token code and the voice token code, um, I'll be able to show you those too. So you'll be able to have that in there. And you can mix, uh, mix and match them, right? So this allows you to change up how you want people to access it. So you might say, Sylvester, well, you know, that's cool, but what else can it do? I think where um, RSA did a really great job is actual the the policies and ability of what you can do here. So I created a few different ones. I got one just for my FortiGate for modern authentication. So that's a cloud radius authentication. I got my higher production policy. Those were more, my more secure apps, low, medium. And I also made a secure ID, identity confidence. And for those of you who don't know what identity confidence is, identity confidence allows you to know that person who's accessing it is actually the person that is. And what RSA secure ID access is, after you connect your um, directory source, maybe that be Active Directory or LDAP, it is every time that user is logging into your environment, um, it's taking um, attributes about them. So it might be what browser they're logging on, uh, what network are they logging on, um, what location, IP address they're logging on, um, what time of day are they logging on. So it's taking all these critical behavioral analytics um, of that person and it's assuring that this is the right person. But if it does something funky like start using Internet Explorer and it has a higher resolution, you know what, we don't really understand, we don't really know if that is Sylvester. Let's step him up to make sure that that's actually him so he can pass authentication. So why is this good? What happened if your credentials have been snooped, but now they don't know exactly what your browser was, and now this can prevent um, continuous um, login attempts, right? We can stop those. Um, stolen credentials now because now it's going to push you on authentication, maybe um, in this case approve to your cell phone. The attacker doesn't have your cell phone, so they don't get access into your account. So that's kind of the real benefit behind that. But let's take a look at uh, um, how do I how, how do you set it up, right? Those tech guys told me that you know I want to see how do you actually set it up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the name, the description area, you know, um, pretty straightforward. So you're going to attach it to your identity source. I'm using Active Directory in this case. Um, in my case, I'm, I'm going to do it for all users. I really didn't want to do it for select users in my demo environment, but you could. Um, I'm going to allow access. The cool thing also you can do here, you can uh, add multiple rule sets and, um, so you can have different um, variations in there. Like for me, instead of me doing required or not required, it's a conditional. So if the identity confidence is low, that means they don't know if that's me, deny access, right? If the identity confidence is high, authenticate. And what I also might add in there is, um, you know, allow access if, no, let's not do that one. Let's say add another one in there. I want to say this attribute, this is the cool place. What type of authentication source? Where are they authenticating from? We can use that. 
authentication type, country, IP address, known browser, trusted location, trusted network, user agent. But in this case, I want to use, um, just in case, let's make sure if I'm logging in from a trusted location, and um, we got to make sure that's set up after this. And um, even gonna, if I am, allow access into it. So we're going to hit save. We're going to go to bottom, save and finish. And now we want to make sure, do I have a trusted network on? Right now, not trusted network, uh, trusted location. And I have one configured as my home office. I can edit it and change it to whatever I want. So let's make sure that the applications, because what I did in this case is I didn't want that for the whole um, user interface. I just want that for my Dropbox people, right? Let's go on the Dropbox and make sure. Actually, let's do it for Salesforce. Um, we can add it to Salesforce right now. I'm going to go to user access. I already have it there. The next step, save and finish. And if you want to see to make sure that the changes actually stick, we're going to hit publish. So right now it's publishing the changes to the RSA cloud authentication that's being hosted in uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, so right now we're just going to take a we're going to wait for that. But in the meantime, let me also log into my um, into the end user portal. All right. You might say against us, you got username and password getting in here. I can also put multi factor authentication, but for time, I'm just going to do it this way. Um, so you can do it beginning, you can do it, you can have it for your users to have authentication and have them do a step up to get into the portal, which I feel like is kind of, you know, depending on the environment, might not be a little bit overkill. Nobody wants to do that. Um, or you can do it for um, application, right? So let's see, I'm going to hit Salesforce, security access, it's checking, it's going through the, that round robin, let's see if it's going to let me in, it should let me in, but let's see if it's asking me to do anything else, all right, it's not sure if it's me, it's sending me a, um, a request from my cell phone, let's see if I can um, show this from my phone real quick, that I had this Run it. Reflect this to my phone quick. Want to do that? Skip that. Um, later. This now. All right. Log it in now. Hopefully, there's a timeout on me. There we go. Not mirroring. There. Get out of here. Got my authentication security access. Let me move this over. See it. All right, it wants me to touch to authenticate in. And now I'm inside. Continue. I can just save the browser if I want to use it, but I want to do it in this case. Now it's going to give me access into my Salesforce tenant, right? So what actually just happened just now? I think that's pretty cool to um, find out. Let's go take a look. What happened when that rule fired off? What just really happened? Let's go back to policies, and let's go take a look at the comedy. Let's go look at the rule set. Great. If the comedy is low, the die access, the identity access confidence is high because it knows I always log in from my Chrome browser. So if it's high, you know, it's also, you know, they can authenticate, and it did medium. So when I did medium, you go back to the assurance level, medium is device biometrics. So that's why it made me do the fingerprint, right? It didn't have to activate trusted browser because, you know, it's so low. You know, it didn't have to deny me access or prompt me, but now that it knows it's me, but I'm still just not sure. I want some added security. I also wanted to do um, a biometric just to make sure that's me. And that's some of the power that we can do there. Um, and there's a lot of other configurations. This is just one of them I wanted to show you. Um, just making use of leveraging the identity confidence and also leveraging the policies, using utilizing the, the identity assurance, and we did it all smooth. And the one thing I wanted to focus on, it didn't really affect the user experience. It was quick. It was easy and it was good to use. So that's all I got for you today. Um, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Uh, make sure to um, share it. Make sure to comment. 
And again, thanks for your time and have a wonderful day. I look forward to talking to you later. I'm out.